Hey guys, Brendan from Tat here. Um, I've just got a case study on a Nissan L brand with a parasitic drawer. So the customer's complaint is that the battery is going flat if they leave it sit overnight. Okay, so parasitic drawer, it can be very scary to a lot of guys, but if you, you have a method, it's, it's not that difficult really. So I'll show you what I've done on this one and where we're heading. So come over in the engine bay. First thing I've done was test the battery um, with our, our Midtronic battery tester. It was absolutely terrible, down at 10 volts. So I've taken that battery out and I've put a donor battery in, okay? It's no good trying to do this with a weak battery and I don't have time to charge that thing up. So I've just taken one off the rack and put a known good battery in there, done a battery test and then starting and charging and the car is working great. Um, next thing, if we come over here, I've got my little Unity current clamp. And you'll see at the moment on this negative terminal that we've got uh, 350 milliamps or so. Now this car's been sitting for a while so I've got the doors open and I've latched the um, switches on these. You can use the, if it's a micro switch in the door latch, we could latch the door. In this case it's a switch on the door jam so I've actually zip tied them closed so I can get into the car. Um, but I'll show you a method that's very handy so that we don't have to disturb a modern car and wake up modules. So we know we've got a 350 amp milli draw, that's too much. We want to be closer to say 30, maybe 50 milliamps on a, on a really late model car. Now I'm gonna go, not to voltage, but I'm gonna to go to millivolts on my, my meter, okay? Important that we're going to millivolts because we, we want to have um, the ability to see a very small number here that you probably wouldn't be able to on the voltage scale. Just test my equipment, we should get zero there. And I've already been through all of the fuses on this car, okay? So we've got a fuse box up here, one down there, one underneath the car. Now if I go to one circuit that doesn't have a problem, we're just measuring across the fuse. So hopefully you're getting that um, if you need to get in here with the camera, but we are measuring across the two terminals on the fuse. Technically, there should be nothing there. So if you come up to the meter now, you'll see that across the terminals there, I've got zero millivolts. There's no voltage drop happening across there. And um, Anyone who, who reads the, mag the TAP magazine would have noticed that Jack had a, a good article on voltage drop across fuses. So I'm now onto this 15 amp fuse that's marked as audio, and we can see I've got a 1.24 millivolt drop across that fuse, right? So what does that mean? Well, if we come up to the computer here, there's various places that you can get these charts. This one is, uh, I believe, from uh, power probe but what we want to do is we want to choose we're using mini fuses I'm going across a 15 amp fuse and it was about 1.1 millivolts that we saw there so if we come across we're going to be somewhere around 240 maybe 262 milliamps um, is of current flowing through that circuit is going to cause that much drop across that fuse so straight away we know that that's going to be our circuit now, the danger here is if I pull that, I mean, yes, I'd be able to see if it goes away, but I'm also gonna wake a lot of things up and I'm gonna then have to um, restart the test as far as letting it go to sleep again. So, um, what I've done in this instance is, I did, that, sorry, I've done this in the afternoon. I've then left the car overnight and it's dead cold. I'm gonna get a thermal imager and we're gonna run around the car and see what we can find. So I've spoken with the customer and they say they don't actually use the DVD player, they only just bought this thing not long ago, so it's probably been a problem um, for a while, but they don't use the DVD player, so rather than rectify, they actually just want it disconnected. So this was in the back of the DVD player. I've just made this um, note here for the next guy since he just wants it disconnected. So if someone else connects it, they know what's gonna be going on. Um, it does have power and accessory hooked up correctly, so I see no fault in the way it's wired. And um, you know, it seems to me like there is a, a fault with this unit itself. But we've got that unplugged now, and so we'll go check our battery drawer. The car's still obviously off and sitting. And now we're down, you know, spot on to about uh, 50 milliamps. I'm not gonna chase any further than that. It's a decently large battery. Um, you know, quite a few items on, on this um, Japanese spaceship. So I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. 
Okay guys, so all taken care of. We've got the old battery back in there now. It charged up well and we've maintained that low draw of around 50 milliamps with that um, the battery so this car is ready to go. So you can see with those couple of methods we're able to quickly find which circuit we needed to go on and then using the thermal imaging we were very quickly able to determine which um, component even though we didn't have a wiring diagram in this case because this was aftermarket which can be one of the most trickiest ones because obviously a wiring diagram would be the next place to head if we needed to start tracing down that circuit. So if this isn't your cup of tea and you, you need help with something like this, um, remember the TAP members can get onto the technical assistance and if you've got something like this that you want to bounce the idea around or we may be able to guide you down um, testing methods like this, get on there and log your job onto the technical assistance and um, thousands of members can group together and um, we can get to the bottom of these um, slightly trickier jobs. If you haven't um, become a member yet, maybe it's time to check out www.tap.net.au. Thousands of members sharing um, knowledge, ideas and data. Thanks guys.